Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Hi, welcome to Seymour's World on Think Tech Hawaii. My name is Seymour Kazimersky. I want to thank all of you who sent me notes and said, Seymour, where were you? Well, I was away. I was in Nova Scotia, and then I went up to Mont Tremblant, which is north of Montreal. Uh, yours truly was in a water ski competition. Unfortunately, I didn't win. Actually, I didn't even qualify, but I don't care, because at over 70, I can still do that kind of stuff. So let's go directly to our guest today. This is one of the most exciting men I have ever met in my life. I'm going to introduce you to George Del Barrio. George, hey. welcome to Seymour's. How, oh, buddy, did you set that bar high? I don't know where I'm going from here, but George, I, I have to tell you, <laughs> I met you just a few weeks ago, and we talked about you coming on to the Make Him Smile program. Yeah. And uh, for my viewers, just in case you don't know, Make Him Smile is a foundation we have, which brings musicians and entertainers into the hospitals here in Hawaii. Uh, we have 48 musicians and entertainers. We play at nine different hospitals. And we entertain about 9,000 kids a year. And we're always looking for new talent. And George, you came up to me and you said, oh, I play music. <laughs> and I said, OK. And you also said, you have a couple of friends that you feel could entertain the kids, too. And I said, yeah. who are your friends? So why don't you tell me a little bit about you, and then we'll talk about your friends. Uh, boof, me talk about me. That's. Uh... Most of my friends say I do that well, but I'll oh, see. Oh, that's I do. Not, No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I'm in my mid 50s right now. I'm in a period of my life where um, the full give back is in effect spiritually for me, universally. Uh, my background as a creative individual comes from the music industry. I'm a third generation composer. I uh, spent 30 years in post production uh, writing music, whether for film, TV. A uh, big thing for me was music libraries, which I still, actually at my age, still compose for which is mind-numbing considering the, the state in which uh, the music business is in, not the music industry, but the business. Um, I sold my recording studio in Studio City in 2007, committed to moving back home here in Hawaii. My mother lives here. I met a lovely lady and uh, married her, and she had two beautiful daughters, and now I got a whole litter of grandkids. Uh, during that period, um, the, the real super geek in me took off, and I got into coding. Uh, we're talking 1999, 2000, 2001, Google Rhythm, search engine, human behavioral physics on searching, all kinds of stuff. And because I did have a period of having to not worry uh, necessarily about um, how am I going to pay to live inside my coconut, um, I spent a lot of time getting into um, behavioral patterns on social media, Google and stuff. And, and I ended up opening up a nice company out here, very small boutique style, uh, built a few hundred websites, uh, strategized a crazy amount of social media campaigns until the last few years where what happened, what's happening recently to social media has taken over. I knew it was going to happen. I had laid everything out so that when this time and period came in, in humanity with social media, uh, I was done. And uh, now it's its own beast and I don't you know, really do too much in it except now using all of my knowledge for what I'm doing now. But George, this, this philanthropy that you're into, yeah. the idea that you want to give back, you know that fit, fits yeah, in with me very such well. A high. And you're a young guy to do that. Most of us who are into philanthropy found foundation work. We're in our at least 10 or 15 years your senior, and yet you're able to do it and still keep your business going, I understand. And at the same time, I see a tremendous passion that you have. I saw it when we went into the hospital the first time. <laughs> and that's amazing, just amazing. Well, I think a lot of that also comes from the fact that I've always, my wife has always accused me of not knowing my value, and I just give away too much because I just, well, I know how to do it. Let me just do it. Well, you should make money. Well, no, I don't, you know, that whole thing. But the giving nature of me actually comes from my mother, who is a phenomenal woman, and uh, uh, I've learned a lot from her. I learned a lot from my wife, you know, about being pono and everything here in Hawaii. But this this whole giving thing, I've always that's just me as a as an individual. I just give. I can't help it. Yeah, what do you need? You need a last shirt on my back? Yeah, I don't care. Just I'll go get another one. You know, here's a dollar. Why do you give him the last dollar? I'll just go make another one. He can't or she can't. I'll just make another dollar. It's always been my, my attitude. So the thing that I'm doing now with the kids that you have actually brought to life by allowing me to come through, uh, make a smile, actually is a derivative of working at Cool Little Ranch for the last year and a half. That was a bucket list decision to go work at Cool Little Ranch as a uh, tour guide there. 
working with great people, uh, Mr. John Morgan, his brother Dave Morgan, the extended family and the supervisors and the gang there are so fun to work with. But at that point is when I realized that dinosaurs and people and the kids, because of Cool Old Ranch, what an impact that was. And then having to take a lot of tours with a lot of young kids, I realized I was joking around with ventriloquism, which is something that I've kind of played with. I don't consider myself a pro. I'm far from it. I can get away with it, but Wait at that a second, point, George, I saw you with those kids in the hospital. I saw you with the nurses. I saw you with the doctors. I mean, they all just loved it. You have a career in this that you are just beginning. I mean, I assume I was the first hospital that you played with. Right? No, absolutely. Was I, it Shriners, I think. Uh, Shriners, yeah. Thing? Dana Land, uh, who I'm so grateful for, and because she of social media, us, she yeah. introduced us together and. And I'm so grateful for that. Um, and then you bringing me into Shriners, and then that evolving into other things. I, I can't say that I know how I'm doing it. It's just coming out of me. If it's, you know, some people say it's a gift, it's a this, I don't know, I don't buy into that stuff. I'm just, this is what I do. Well, let's see. There's something sticking out of your pants there. What is that? Uh, can we, oh, yeah, there it is. What is that thing? Okay. So th this All right, hang on, stand by. Here we go. So this guy's name is Why It? Yes, why it? Uh, can you spell that? Well, I don't know how to spell, but I'm gonna give it a shot. Go for it. Uh, all right, remember we practice this, okay? Yeah, okay, well, W-H-Y-I- it. Oh, God, you scared me. <laughs> so, Wyatt, how old are you? I'm just nine years old. No, I'm five years old. Really? Yeah. And who is your daddy? Kind of a weird question. Nobody ever asked me that before. Uh, I'd have to say Abba Jeebs over here. Abba Jeebs. Abba Jeebs. So Abba Jeebs. Wait a sec. I know this guy Jeebs, Wyatt. Yeah, I do. He's, he's kind of cool. He's helping me. Is that, is that his stage name for George Del Barrio? Yeah, actually it is. Yeah, wow. that's the ticket. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so let me ask you, Wyatt. Uh, you played at Shriners Hospital, and that was your first gig at the hospital. What was it like playing for the kids? Uh, it's so unreal. It's I can't even put any real words to it because it just the Nick them so happy and it smiles and makes me smile and I just want to give them a hug. It was amazing. Actually, we're going to show a little clip of you playing. Are you ready to see yourself on television, Wyatt? Is that what all these lights are all about? Are you, yeah, okay, let's do it. We're going to get that clip up for you because okay. your buddy Jeeves, who brought you to <laughs> Shriners, he was there with you. Let's see if we can get that clip of you coming into Shriners Hospital. Look at little man, look at him! That is so cool! Can I come over and talk to you with, with my friend Terry? Can I come talk to you? Okay. Hi, how are you? What's your name? Is it Leroy? Wow, you have such a great smile. What's your favorite color? What color? Oh, he likes green. I love green. A matter of fact, I have to play in the grass. I do. Let's, uh, no, let me see. What else should we ask? Wyatt, that wasn't you. Who no, was that? No, no, that's my friend Terry. That's Terry Terrace, our office. Yeah. Oh, were you happy to see Terry on TV? Oh, yeah, so cool. Wasn't that cool? Yeah. Well, I, uh, I think we may have a picture of you coming up later on, but I need to ask Jeebs a few questions. May well, I ask him some? Sure, you know, I know I just sit right here because look at all these Are lights. you going to behave? Yeah. 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 You better behave, because if you're not going to behave, you know what happens, right? <laughs> Why it knows. You better be a good boy. Okay. <laughs> so, George, this idea, how long did it take to make this character? Um, there's, there's a really unique story behind it, and one, it includes Mr. Terry Fader, the very famous ventriloquist that, that uh, won uh, America's Got Talent, has a great show at the Mirage. Uh, uh, I started working with Terry actually on an ukulele project that involved one of his puppets called Kani Kana Kapila. Uh -huh. And uh, there was a change in some things, so I had to kind of put it on hold, and then I went to Cool Lower Ranch. But when I came back and realized what I wanted to do, I decided, well, I'm, gonna, I'm not nowhere near as fantastic mm -hmm. as uh, Terry Fader or Jeff Dunham or any of those guys, but I thought maybe I could just brush up on it. 
And then uh, I actually ordered these from a very famous puppeteer named Steve Axtell, who makes Terry's and other people's mm -hmm. puppets. And I just went with it. I, there, I, I have to admit that there was a little bit of a um, weird feeling of like, oh, all this money I'm spending on these puppets, geez, this is not cheap. But then uh -huh. it, as quick as I said it in my mind is, is as quick as it evaporated because I knew what I wanted to do with it, and that was to go see the kids with it. And then once that came into play, it just iced over the, the cost of these professional puppets. And You know, so I have I to say, uh, I've seen a lot of entertainers come to our children, you know, over <laughs> the last five years. I can't remember the last count we had, but it's something like 1,800 Oh, performances geez. over the last few years that we've been doing Make Him Smile. I've never, never seen as many nurses, doctors, and kids just totally break <laughs> up laughing when they see your characters. It's amazing. Well, I have to admit, too, that um, Steve is really cool, isn't he? Yeah, Steve, who, I mean, look, I mean, I walk in with this already, yeah. and I already get the, you know, you know, the, the blown away reactions yeah. and the very, you know, yeah. so that's that's 50, 60 percent of my job is already done because of the design right. of Steve Axtell. Now, the rest of it is up to me to participate and, you know, and, and with each child as an individual kind of an improv on the spot, depending on how they feel or, you know, whatever the case is. So How does it feel now, George? Now, here you are. You've done your first hospital gig. I have you written down now. I think you're going to be doing six or seven in the next couple of months. How does it feel? Uh, I, I can't explain it. Uh, the, um, my endorphins kick beyond a place that I even recognize you know, in my own universe. I saw that when you were walking down the hall. Yeah, and it's and the thing is, is that um, uh, you're losing your breath. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm losing my breath because sometimes it gets a little emotional. But it's just, it's it's an amazing blessing to me that I, I, I do this. I can do this. I have faith and confidence in myself to walk in and say, okay, I can do this. I can do this. These kids are so cool, and, they're, and they've got so many things ahead of them that I want to bring them just a few minutes, just a few minutes. And, and, and for me, one of the biggest memories I have are just a few minutes of people saying just the right things that got me across harder times later. Well, you know, you, um, you're doing something, George, that's absolutely unique. <laughs> and uh, I've, ne I've never seen it done before in all of my research. And I can say that from Make the Make Them Smile Foundation, you're a tremendous addition to us. Now, Wyatt, I have to tell you, we're going to take a little short break, if it's okay with you. Yeah. And then we're going to bring your friend Terry in. Do okay. You mind, do you mind if he takes your place? Not at all. i got to make a tinkle. Okay. Are you sure yes. it's okay? I'm, I'm only five years old. i got to go back to Well, Wyatt, I have to tell you, you are one of the nicest <laughs> dinosaurs I have ever met. Well, thank you. Can I give you a quick hug? Yes, you may. Oh, 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 thank you so <laughs> much. Thank you so much. <laughs> Wyatt, we are going to be back in a minute. All right. Okay. I'm, I, I'm going to tell the audience that they can see you at any of the hospitals. Just look at the Make Them Smile Foundation website, and they can tell where you will be the next time. And if they want to come and see you, they're welcome to come at any time. That's so cool. I'm Seymour Kazimierski on Seymour's World at Think Tech Hawaii. We'll be back in a minute. Hey. Hey, baby. That's you. I want to know, will you watch my show? I hope you do. It's on Tuesdays at 1 o'clock, and it's out of the comfort zone, and I'll be your host, R.B. Kelly. See you there. Aloha, I'm Jay Fidel, one of the hosts of Asia in Review, which is broadcast Monday afternoons on thinktechhawaii.com. We cover, we study news and politics in and affecting Asia. We work hard to bring you the most interesting subjects and guests who will raise your awareness. Please join us Mondays every week on Asia in Review on thinktechhawaii.com and also on YouTube and iTunes. Thanks for watching. We'll see you then. Aloha, she she, and saijian. When I was growing up, I was among the one in six American kids who struggle with hunger. And hungry mornings make tired days. Grumpy days. Bleh. Kind of days. But with the power of breakfast, the kids in your neighborhood can think big and be more. When we're not hungry for breakfast, we're hungry for more. More ideas. More dreams. More fun. When kids aren't hungry for breakfast, they can be hungry for more. Go to hungeris.org and lend your time or your voice to make breakfast happen for kids in your neighborhood. 
Hi, welcome back to Seymour's World. I'm Seymour Kazimersky. And uh, you met in the first half of the show one of our favorite dinosaurs. His name was Wyatt. And I have to tell you, uh, just before we get to talk to George again, uh, I'm doing a commentary right after this show, which is called The Road to Happiness. And I look at you, George, and I have to say, you're a happy guy. <laughs> you are truly a very happy person. And I wonder how you exude that, that positive attitude that you have. It, it, it is work. And, uh, but where I dig deep into it is, is a space that uh, I've created for myself. It's a safe space. Um, I've always been uh, uh, looked at as the guy who owned, never really got into the sandbox, but I'd watched the ant farm. And I just felt very comfortable. I, I, I created a very comfortable place for myself um, to exist. I always look at a sense of humor with everything has to have a sense of humor. That's just who I am. Sometimes it's not that funny. Sometimes it's funny. But I always just keep, I, I, I can't do anything else. I can't allow myself to get sucked into the this vortex of negativity because right. the, the visceral reaction then changes who I am as a human being. It changes everybody as a human being. So if right now I'm a dividing rod for this in this moment of my life with, with Terry Parasaurial Office, with Wyatt, with the hospitals and the kids, I'm going full on and wow. I'm going to take no hostages. Well, I'm gonna... Terry, good morning. <laughs> How are you? Hey, dude, what's up? You've been, you've been waiting to come on the show. I yeah, know that. I, I know you had my friend Wyatt over there. Yeah, like, yeah, Wyatt came on first. And I have to tell you that your, uh, your buddy George, or his name is Jeeps, right? Yeah. Yeah, he seems to take, uh, he likes to take a lot of attention away from you. Let's what? try to focus the attention on you. How's that? This guy. Okay, no problem. All right. So tell us a little bit about, well, what's your name again? Terry? Parasaurolophus. Terry, Terry. Ter <laughs> it's Parasaurolophus. Oh, Parasaurolophus. You know, the thing with Terry is that Terry is very unique. Can I tell him why so you can just stop talking? Yeah, yeah I'll just whatever, no problem. It's because I'm a duck-billed dinosaur and I had no lips. You have no lips. Can I see? See. Oh my gosh, there are no lips. You're absolutely right. So is, it's, it, is it hard to chew, Terry? No, not when I'm eating the stuff I'm supposed to eat, like, you know, twigs and leaves and stuff. And, and does George find enough of those for you? No, 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 he, he doesn't. No, no, no. Why does he feed you more? You'd think he can find lots of that stuff. Well, he lets here. me out to play, and I go and I get my own stuff with my friends, but you know. I, I just try to just cruise. I'm chill like him, you know. I'm just like, hey, what's up? Uh -huh. I, think. Uh -huh. I go in, I say hi, I make jokes and whatever. Yeah. Well, do you have <laughs> Do you have six toes? What, what What What's going on over here? Yeah, I'm kind of a mess. I got like eight. There's There's two underneath here that you really kind of can't oh, see, more, and no. so you know. Yeah, he's a He's a very unique cat. He's very laid back. He's very chill. And, the, and I use Terry a lot of times when it comes to children sometimes that have a problem speaking correctly. And that's because by having a duck bill, he doesn't have lips, which means it's hard for you to pronounce what? M's, T's, D's, and stuff like that. So what I do is I work with Perry, or Terry, I'm sorry, with the kids in pronouncing certain words that also are contributed to like kids that might have uh, palate, cleft palate issues. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know, the pronounced words and stuff right. like that. So in the future, I'm going to be working with uh, recreational therapists and stuff and creating videos with Terry to work on uh, things with Fabulous kids that idea. are, yeah, and I thought about this at one second because as a ventriloquist, yeah, you still got a lot of work. He's got to do. Yeah, he's got a lot. Oh, of work come on, do. he's pretty good. Oh, he's I trying. He's trying. You were you were at the hospital <laughs> with him. It was terrific. Uh, he's trying. He still has a ways to go. But for me, as a ventriloquist, ironically, the very same use of my lips to make those very difficult letters, the M, the Bs, the Ps, mm -hmm. Ys, and stuff are the same kind of challenges that kids have with cleft palates and stuff. So I can sew that all together into me working with Terry, working with the kids, having fun, telling stories, talking about other things too, you know, to lift up the kids with courage as they go through trying times in their lives, perhaps, you know, getting, you know, bullied or, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So that's my focus. My focus is to in empower the kids that I see, that we get to see, and bring them to a place where I'm building courage with them, uh, through them, so that they can grow and work through whatever challenges they have, not only now, but when they leave the hospitals. Mm -hmm. And they have other challenges that we all even see even in our adult lives. It's funny, you know, a lot of times we focus on bullying just being a thing of the kids, but... <laughs> 
it's a word that goes through our... I think there's something else that you don't realize, George, that hmm. you are bringing through. And Terry, I I'm, I'm mean you, not George, right? It's you that... Thanks, dude. This. You relax the kids. <laughs> you absolutely relax them. When I saw you with the kids at Shriners, they, it broke down the barriers of what it is. Sometimes with a musician, they're, you know, they don't know who it is. But when they see a dragon and they see Terry or they see Wyatt, all of a sudden the big smile comes out and you break down that barrier of what is this, who's this person, because it's, it's an animal. I think you've got a very, very hidden <laughs> message that we could use as part of our therapy for these kids in the hospital. Yeah, and that's, uh, well, why don't you say it? Well, that's what we kind of want to do. We want to work with, with the kids, and we want to work with the parents and the, and the therapists and all kinds of stuff, so we, we can have a great time with the kids and, and, and help them grow, and, and, and it even helps us grow, too. It is uh, absolutely imperative, and one of those things I'm at awe of how we can help the help the kids in the hospital. Uh, in my opinion, we should um, try to see if you could play even more where we could bring recreational therapy as part of the program with the dinosaurs. It really could work, and we're going to talk about that obviously yeah. as we as we mature with the program with you. Yeah, that's that's, that's the, the intention with 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 Terry Wyatt. I have another one called Dino Mite. He's only about eight months old. He's still in his egg. And uh, the, the intentions is to grow a complete movement with what I'm doing that can help support these kids more than just showing up. For, I'm so blessed to be able to walk in and then, you know, if I have a five minute impact on a kid, that's just like game changing to me, without a doubt. You saw the video that I did of yeah. myself, you yeah. know, when I went in there going, hey, I'm going to work at Shiners. And then the second half of the video, I'm like just glowing and blown away, but so emotionally uh, let's, let's look at that you video. You want to look at that we video? Okay, that all right, video. go ahead. Let's see if we get Can that video. Can you bring that up, Robert? I don't know where that is. Where is that? By Guam. Guam. Near. Near Guam. That's so cool. <laughs> I'll let you well, that wasn't the one that we were talking about, but it doesn't no, matter. No, that was, that's cool, that, though. It shows. Was, it was showing the interaction with oh, the kid. Oh, yeah, that one we were talking about when I was in the parking lot Correct. and walking, yeah, yeah doing yeah, my I selfie. Don't, I didn't ah. see that up there, but, but the, the idea of seeing the kid interact, you see, they can't do that with a musician in reality because it's somebody playing ukulele or guitar, etc. Yeah. But the interaction of that child, Helene and Matt, who are the two recreational therapists, their eyes just went wild when they saw that because that interaction is what they're looking for. They're looking for the kids not just to listen, not just to watch, uh, not to just to beat their hands to the music, but that interaction is critical. And that was important for our audience to see, to understand that this is a whole new hidden genre of physical interaction with children in hospitals. Yeah, I know that puppeteers, ventriloquists going into hospitals and stuff, it's not necessarily a new thing. Um, it's how we deliver what we deliver right. as a performer, as an entertainer, or what is our core mission with it. Um, I don't. I have no illusions of being trying to be super famous ventriloquists like uh, Jeff Dunham, Terry Fader, and those guys. That's what they do. They they entertain the public, and they're geniuses and brilliant at it. My total focus is smiles on these kids. But but if I have the ability, if I have the power, if I have the training through recreational therapists and the things that I do to also make giving it some kind of a long-lasting impact on something I might say or educational that might carry them through the tough parts in their life beyond being a kid. You know, just really something that's, uh, you, know, a, 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 you know, some kind of lesson, you know, through a story I might tell about something that Well, you know, Dana them. wrote a book. I don't know whether you saw the book that she wrote. She had mentioned something it, like that. Right, yeah. and she's passing it out. And anything that you can do to help kids is something that I'm going to get involved with. That just happens to be my Kuliana, you know. <laughs> I, I, I love helping kids in any which way, and I'm very much like you that way. And that's yeah. when I saw you and I said, wow, you actually want to make this your life's ambition? Yeah. You know, most of our musicians and entertainers have to make a living, right? And they can play once a month sometimes. Oh, some of them can only play once every two or three months. It's yeah. just because they have schedules to keep. You, on the other hand, said to me, I'll play whatever you want. I'll, I'll, I'll come and I'll introduce my puppets or my dinosaurs anytime. And yeah. I think that is just terrific. And I really appreciate you doing that for us. Yeah, it's, 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 I'm very lucky at this time in my life that I can actually afford that time. Mm -hmm. Because if there's any one thing that I've been able to manage okay throughout my life without, you know, uh, God teaching me some kind of a lesson is the power of time. 
So I've made my time mine in a way so that I can give it to others. And that's why I'm so available to the kids and to anything I want to do right now. If I want to sit there and go, okay, listen, I'm going to do a tour through the country. And, um, you know, if I get some assistance just for travel and whatever, I'm on it. Let's do it. Let's just do it. Let's just do it. You know, did so. I tell you we're starting another program? It's so funny because you're new to our program. And, of course, Make Him Smile is a pretty established foundation after five years. But um, one of our other guests, Raina Rowland from East Oahu Physical Therapy, mm -hmm. she calls me up while I was in Montreal, and she says, Seymour, I have an idea. And I said, what's the idea? She said, I think we should provide the hospitals with hospital gowns for the kids. I said, well, they already got, they already have hospital gowns. She says, no, let's provide it with superheroes, Wonder Woman, Batman, all oh, these guys. So nice. we're now right in the middle of making these kids smile again. Because when they come into the hospitals, you know it's not a good time for them, right? They're right. going to be staying there for a few days and all that stuff. So here we have a chance to make these kids smile the minute they get into, into their room and they can pick a gown, a Wonder Woman gown, a Batman, a super, whatever the superhero is of the day. Thanks to guys like you. Oh, I, I'm just I'm just an aggregate. I'm just uh, I'm just moving the ball forward. And there's thousands of people like myself and yourself out here doing stuff for the kids. And and um, you know, just I think the one thing that I just want to say about what my mission about is Please. about is not necessarily about. I, I might re be repeating myself. Just going in for five minutes and putting the smiles on there. I want to play a major part in 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 being. Um, used as an educational tool, however, the divine information comes through me, whether it's through education, whatever, to just keep that motion going. It's not me just going in there saying, hey, I'm doing a puppet show with dinosaurs. No, I'm using this beautiful piece of work that Steve Axtell created for me as a gateway to have a conversation with kids that goes beyond me going, hey, I'm a ventriloquist. Hey, I'm doing this. This is what I'm doing for a living now. I'm going to make you laugh. I got to go. I know I'm sorry. The doctors are coming in right now because they got to take, you know, change your <laughs> IV or something. No, it's, it's going to be much bigger than that. It's George, there's no better way of saying it than you just did. <laughs> and um, uh, again, I thank you for joining our Make Em Smile family. Thank you for joining me on Seymour's World. You're doing an amazing job. And I just <laughs> wish you the best of luck in the future. Thanks. And to you, Terry. Thank you very much for coming. No problem, dude. Thanks and for having us out here. Just, just make sure this guy George feeds you enough so that you can grow out of that bag and stand on your own. <laughs> I'm Seymour Kazimersky on Seymour's World. We'll see you next week. Have a wonderful aloha.